my name is Michael Watson and I'm a composer and music producer. With this video I'm starting a tutorial series on how to use Ableton Live 9. If you've never used Ableton Live 9 and you want to get to know how to use it then this is for you. You can either purchase a copy, I'm going to be using Ableton Live 9 Suite which is the full version, or you can download Ableton Live Lite or a trial. I will be going through the Ableton Live reference manual which you can download, the link is in the description, or you can go onto the Ableton's website and you can access it there. If I don't die before I've made it through the manual, I'm also planning on making an Ableton Push 2 series and teaching you guys how to use your Ableton Push 2 in conjunction with Ableton Live. Just to give you a bit of a background about me, I write music for a living, however I do not use Ableton Live 9, so I will be learning with you guys through the manual and teaching you everything I learn systematically. Alright guys, so this is what Ableton Live looks like when you open it for first time. Before we delve into how everything works, let's start with one of the most important features in Ableton Live. And that is this window here at the bottom left. It's called the Info View. The Info View provides a brief description of the user interface element that the mouse is currently over. So what this means is that if you hover your mouse on any element in Ableton Live, like right now I'm hovering on this empty space, this is called a clip slot, and I know this because if I look at the info view at the bottom left, it'll tell me it's a clip slot and it'll tell me exactly what a clip slot does. This is great because it works for most things in the whole entire program. If there is a button that you want to learn even more about, you can head on over to the index in the manual and find it here in the alphabetical list. And if that's how you usually do things, then let me give you a quick tip. If you click Ctrl or Command F, depending on what kind of machine you're using, you'll see the search tab open up here at the bottom of your browser window. And at the left, you'll be able to search for a specific thing. So what did we just look at? We looked at a clip, a clip slot. Brilliant, now by clicking these up and down buttons, I'll jump to all the spots in the manual that talk about a clip slot. Or if you just wanna look in the index, see I typed index, you can scroll down. All right, let's get back to here. So we've talked about the info view and the index. Next, let's talk about setting up your preferences. So if you head on over to your live button over here, and on Windows it'll be called Options, I believe. Head on to your preferences. Here you'll be able to control things like how your interface looks, you'll be able to manage your input and output connections, your sample and bit rates, and so forth. You can even change your language. Oh yeah, oh yeah, ich will gerne Deutsch haben, danke. Um, that should take effect when I restart it. All your other things are over here. I'm not going to go through everything because it's going to take really long, but just know that here you can manage where you find, for instance, your installation folder for packs, which are like music packs that you download, and uh, look and feel. I mean, get creative. Wowza. All right, first, I like you. No, not, not to Nautic. Um. Yeah, sorry, I'm having- oh no guys, guys, this is one that's ugly. If you use clay, I'm gonna judge you and I'm gonna judge you hard. Don't use that one, okay? I'm gonna stick with frost, this is beautiful. So your preference tabs, we manage all those things. Now finally, the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this tutorial is the main live screen. So most of your work in live happens in this main live screen. The screen consists of a number of views, and each view manages a specific aspect of your live set, which is the type of document that you create and work on in live. So a live set would be live's equivalent of, say, a song in Studio One, or a project file in, say, Logic, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. At various places in the main screen, you see these little triangles, they kind of look like play buttons on grey circles. They're on the top left one, the bottom left one, and on the bottom right one. These are called selector buttons, and if you click them, you will change the view. As you see, if I click the bottom right one, it takes away this big box over here, which is where you will be managing your audio effects and instruments. If you don't want this info view, if you've learned where everything is, and this thing is frankly taking up space, you just hit the selector button, and it disappears. Same here, if you don't want to see your instruments, you just hit that, all of a sudden you've opened up this whole window. And if at any stage you decide, actually I don't know what this button does, quickly hit the show hide, select a button for the info view, and you're good to go. You can also run live in full screen mode. You can do this by heading on over to view, and clicking full screen. 
Now this is a little bit baffling for me because apparently under the selector button on the bottom right there should be a little tab that you can hit to close full screen view. Maybe you have it, for some reason I don't. Although there is an update on busy downloading for Ableton Live 9 so hopefully the update has this. But there should be a little button here that you can click and it should hop right back. Alternatively you can just go back to view and uncheck full screen mode or hit the shortcut. If you see a box over here with two arrows you can also hit that and click full screen but like I said I don't have it. When you are in full screen mode and now all of a sudden everything disappeared at the top here you can't access view. Do not panic. Hover your mouse to the top of the screen and it should pop down and you can get the hell back to your comfort zone. If Live's browser here on the left is open, you can also adjust the size of the main window's horizontal split by dragging it. You click and hold and drag. And that'll be all for today's lesson. Hopefully you aren't as scared of opening Live and being like, OMG, what is going on here? And apparently I thought that was a good way to end my first tutorial. But thank you for watching. And if you do want to learn how to use Ableton Live 9.7, I suggest you subscribe because I'm going to be going through the whole manual until I get sick of reading the manual for fun. But if I do manage to get through the manual, I will also be opening, opening my Ableton Push 2 and teaching you guys how to use that. Thanks so much. Goodbye.